um, in a minute. So the first one, are you writing it up? Okay, is you can grab your Bibles or your phones on your Bibles, whatever. And uh, interesting, Mark had an interesting conversation with some of the older youth, or no, the younger youth who, when they read the passage, they go, but my Bible didn't say this, doesn't say that. And then they actually explored, well, actually, these are different translations and it's uh, really interesting. It gives a richer uh, idea. So we've got, um, first of all, 1 Peter 3, verses 8 to 11. So, finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers be com- and sisters, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. And the second reading is from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord, of the Sovereign Lord, is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, And a release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the cities, the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Well, good morning. Uh, an attempt to try and uh, disturb you a little bit. I hope you're not feeling too wobbly if you arrived early uh, this morning and weren't allowed to come into church, or at least into the building. Uh, it can be a bit dis- dis- disconcerting for some of us. Um, has everyone got a, one of these uh, little uh, plastic handouts? If not, um, maybe Deb and others can pass them around. You've all got one. If anyone hasn't got one, some at the back. Maybe just chuck a few down the rows. There's plenty around. Uh, this is not a ticket. Uh, this is not a ticket to come to church. Uh, this is a reminder for you, as people who come to church, uh, about what the teaching is today. So um, we'll uh, get straight into it. Um, pray that you'll be graceful with me as we took us a while to start. So um, maybe it'll take us a little while to finish, but I think the journey's going to be uh, going to be worth uh, doing. So, Father, we just pray that uh, by the the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, our God and uh, Saviour, Redeemer. So the the attempt today, uh, before Easter, uh, we were told to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Uh, What I want to tell you today is that we're told after Easter to pick up our shovels uh, and follow Jesus. Uh, to pick up our shovels, because we're in that passage that we just read, uh, it was about rebuilding, restoring, and uh, renewing, or as it says on your back of your card, uh, rescuing. Uh, during April, as uh, Deb said, our theme uh, from 1 Peter 3 is stepping out. And uh, when uh, I was reading through that passage and trying to see which bit jumped out for me, it was this piece uh, in 1 Peter 3.11 where it says, Seek peace and pursue it, to seek peace and pursue it. And in Peter's context, if you can remember, that was during the reign of the Romans. They had peace. It was called the Pax Romana. You know, it was all cool. Everything was sweet. They had peace. But obviously it wasn't a peace that uh, Peter was that uh, excited about, and nor were uh, many of the, uh, the, uh, the, the trodden over tribes and uh, people groups. The Pax Romana was a result of the treaties that they'd made as a result of the end of a spear. Um, and so it was a bit of a false peace, 
the Pax Romana. And what Peter is talking about when he uses the word peace is a peace where it's not just the absence of war, but it's actually the fullness of God. It's the fullness of every good thing possible for creation. Now, the word that he uses there in the Greek is erene, which is actually a translation of a Hebrew word, which you will have heard of, which is shalom, which is the, uh, the, the Jewish greeting of blessing. May, you, may the shalom of God be upon you, the peace of God. May every good thing possible be yours. Not just that you won't have a fight with, uh, in your household or that you, um, that you get along with your work colleagues or you, know, you pass your exams or whatever. It's not about the absence of conflict, but it's actually the fullness of God. So when Peter says to seek shalom, seek peace and pursue it, that's the sort of peace that he's after. Now he's actually quoting from uh, the book of uh, from Psalms. Uh, Psalm 34, uh, which was King David. So King David says exactly the same thing. He says, seek shalom and pursue it. Don't just be a peacekeeper, but be a peacemaker. That's that's what this is all about. And uh, so that was the bit that uh, that grabbed me, that we would have in this uh, passage of, uh, sorry, this letter of 1 Peter 3, uh, 1 Peter, that uh, embedded in there is ha- having dealt with all of the stuff that's surrounding what it means to follow Jesus, that we're actually commissioned and challenged to go out, to seek peace and pursue it. So that gets me wondering, well, what is, how would we do that? What connection does that have with Jesus? And that's where this second passage uh, is really helpful. And if, if some of you who know me uh, know this is one of my favorite passages, um, and uh, I named uh, our company has got uh, that we that we do mentoring and training around uh, has this embedded in it. It's part of my um, my password too. If you uh, wanted to get into my computer <laughs> or into my bank account, or <laughs> but I've I've uh, capitalized different things. Yeah. <laughs> so in Luke chapter four. Uh, Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, that's right at the beginning, he goes to his hometown, he comes to church on a Saturday, uh, and he rocks up there, and uh, he stands up to read the Bible. And they hand him uh, the scroll of Isaiah. And uh, I don't know whether he just timed it like that, you know, uh, I've got to wait for the lectionary to sort of like line up. I'm, I can't go back this week. It's got to be next week because you know, they're still through Jeremiah at the moment. But anyway, right to Isaiah. Uh, he unrolls the scroll. Has to get to chapter 61. Can you imagine how long that would have taken? Yeah. <laughs> Gets to Isaiah 61. Um, and uh, it says that he found the place where it was written. And uh, literally as I'm writing this, I was getting goosebumps. Because this is the, this is the big statement you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, to set the captives free, to proclaim release to the captives and you know, healing to the blind and that the lame will leap with joy, all those things. He goes, and then he sits down and it says the whole synagogue, all the church people, their eyes are fixed on him. And he says, this has become real today. You know, he's claiming all of that, all of the things that Isaiah was promising would come. There would come this person who would have the Spirit of God in him who was going to rebuild, renew, and restore everything. He doesn't get to that verse, though. He stops at verse 3. Well, verse 2, actually. He stops at verse 2 of Isaiah 61. He only reads his verse 1 and 2. We read 3 and 4 as well. So he sits down, and everyone's like... Is this, what's, what's going on? Is this the carpenter's son? Who is this guy? And to make a, a very short passage even shorter, they actually all jumped up, gr- mobbed him, grabbed him, and the, the town was on top of it like a hill, and they were trying to push him over the top of the hill, kill him. At that point, right at the beginning of the story, sorry, they're trying to kill him because he claimed and, and was saying that actually the Spirit of God upon me to actually bring change, to bring the shalom, to bring the peace uh, that the people wanted. You know, they're, the, they're all sitting under Roman rule. They want someone like this 
but they don't want this Jesus character because actually the bit that he lives, the next little verse uh, is about um, forgiving, forgiving their enemies. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to forgive um, the Romans. The, um, the great thing about uh, this passage, when it, if you continue it on, is that Jesus goes through his ministry, he starts to do it. That's what we have. That's what the Gospels show us, that he did this. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. The blind were being, uh, being able to see, the lame were walking, and then he, he gets to the end of his life, and they, they do it. They do kill him. Um, then he comes in back, and he says, uh, by the Spirit of God, he says, um, what I want you to do is to basically finish the work. I'm commissioning you guys to go and do what I do uh, and, to, and to do it everywhere, in every possible part of the world. And to find out exactly what that is, we need to read uh, Isaiah 61, verse 3 and 4. So let me just uh, reread that to you. Uh, Isaiah 61, 3 and 4. Uh, so on those people who have been healed and set free... On people like you and me who have discovered that Jesus Christ brings forgiveness of our sins, mercy and grace into our lives, restoration of our families, when we've experienced peace for ourselves and bestowed on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair, those people, that is you and me, those people shall be called oaks of righteousness. The big oaks of memory is they're getting this huge, um, uh, huge vision of it. The terebinth was the actual the oak name. And it was going to be planted. And those people essentially are going to provide shade. And those people, us, shall. They shall, and I've written it on the back of your cards here, essentially transliteration, they shall restore communities. They shall rebuild families. They shall rescue people. That's what we're called to do. So when Peter's going, you know, inserts in there, seek peace and pursue it, like the, the beautiful thing about the scriptures is that you need to put on the goggle and, and your snorkel to put your head under the water to see the amazing stuff that's underneath. This is the biggest integration piece of literature that ever existed. Like everything connects to everything. And so he just goes, you know, seek peace and pursue it. Oh yeah, as a Jew, got it. I know exactly what that is. That's back to uh, Psalm 34. That connects to Isaiah 61. That's what Jesus said in Luke 4. Bang, bang, bang. Yep, I'm away. Whew, stepping out. I'm representing Jesus. I want to be his hands, his feet, and his voice. We read it and go, Huh, oh, yeah, sounds like a pretty good strategy. <laughs> Let's put that up on a, on a whiteboard. <laughs> so... What does all that mean for us? Well, as I've said, I've, I've put some of that on the, the back of your thing. And, I've, and what we've done there is uh, we've summarised it in three different ways. So in the middle is that big, you know, the big picture, the, 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 the areas. Now, you can do it in lots of different areas. Uh, so Isaiah was talking about ruined cities, devastated places, ancient ruins, the devastations of the generations. Like he's... Like he's describing something. He's, he's, in one sense, he's lost for words. You know, it's, it's everything that's possibly gone wrong in our world. We're going to fix this up. This is a, a different way of describing the new creation. So what, how, what do you imagine? You know, where is the mess that you see? Where is the injustice that you see? Where is the brokenness that you see? What area is that? You know, what are the things that keep you awake at night or grip your heart or stir you up when you read it in the paper? You go, not again. You know, how can this happen again? What's going wrong? Why is it always failing? What's going, you know, like, where's the things that stir you up? There's no right answer. For, there's not, like, we're not meant to be all homogeneous and all saying exactly the same thing. We're all meant to be unique in that. Not unique, but, you know, diverse. You know, some of us will be around this issue or some around this issue, one that's gripped me recently just because we're um, you know, channel surfing through Facebook. I posted yesterday, um, it's the 10th anniversary of my relationship with Facebook today. <laughs> Truly, I don't think we're going to make it to 11 years. <laughs> I'm sick of it. But um, 
But one of the things I did see on there was about uh, precious plastics. A group, uh, I think it was Sweden, was it? Did we decide? Um, where these guys uh, have recognised, you know, the, the plastics uh, recycling issue and how we're going to, you know, what are we doing with all this plastics? Now that China has uh, shut the doors to receiving all of our rubbish, you know, Mandari uh, Council are suggesting that we should have uh, plastic uh, see-through rubbish bins so that we can all see the rubbish that we put out and how badly we misuse stuff. So, but anyway, it's the whole plastic thing. It starts to grip me. I go, oh, how can we fix this problem? Well, we can, we can create some way of recycling plastic and there's all this stuff on the internet. I was all excited about it. the other day. My poor children and Sammy have to watch all these videos that I was binge watching. Going, oh, look at this, look at this. Oh, this is going to be awesome. <sighs> you know, Beck's going, well, what about that? You know, what about someone who's sick? You know, like health issue or, you know, what about education issue? What about all the other issues that there are, you know? I get gripped by one thing, you get gripped by something else. So different areas, okay? Um, down the bottom, uh, three different ways uh, that we could uh, engage with that. Again, lots of different possibilities, but here's three that we came up with. One is that we can meet a need. There's a need that needs to be met, and we could meet it. Someone is hungry, they need food. Someone is homeless, they need a house. Like that immediate, so like bang, bang, you know, short time frame, um, get it done. The second one there is about solving a problem. It's almost the systemic issue things. Some of us are wired like that. You know, okay, there are 30 people that are hungry, but how did they get hungry? Why are they hungry? Why don't they have housing? Why are they sick? What's going on? What's the underlying problem here? Is it a result of the drinking water is fouled or you know, sewage problems or you know, those sort of things? Meet a need, solve a problem. The third one that we put down was seizing an opportunity. There's an opportunity. There's something we could, if, if we got that and that and that together, my gosh, we could do something big. You know, some of us are wired like that. You know? Like someone's starving right next to us, but we're too busy thinking about this other thing. <laughs> you know, future orientated. You know, and that's probably where I'm a little bit, um, that's probably where I live a little bit out there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> so, three different uh, ways uh, that we could meet the three different areas um, that we've identified as that we could work in. So, what I've done here or what Deborah's, uh, my wonderful assistant, has drawn up for me, um, is an intersection of those three things. So I'm not quite sure where to stand, really. Um, so down this side are the ways that we could meet um, the issues, so meeting needs, solving problems, or seizing opportunities. And here are three different um, areas within which we could do it. Now... All I'm wanting to show here is that there is a variety in the room, okay? And the issue is that, well, the thing is we can become uh, ungraceful <laughs> towards each other when the other person that we're seeing isn't doing it the way that we think that should be done. Okay? So to start us off, I want you to think about it. What, what area makes you get, have some passion about and what way... Might, you, might be the thing that how you normally are wired to do. So as an example, around restoring communities, uh, we seized an opportunity as a community uh, some five years or plus ago that let's say we, we, were, we had some land, we had access to some money, we were middle class, and so we built a community centre. What are some other things, and which box would I put it in, that grips your heart or that you're interested about? Yeah, Lisa. Um, the money Ponga thong, big Ponga thong. So we're about rescuing people, maybe. So meeting a need, so we you know, rescue people, ping Ponga thong, ping Ponga thong. There is no right or right, right or wrong answer which box it goes in, okay? <laughs> or about my spelling. <laughs> yeah. Quick, I'm getting the wind up already. <laughs> nothing else you guys are interested in? No, nothing else is passionate about? 
But no one, did anyone come to the um, cancer fundraising thing on Friday night? Yep. So we could probably put that. There's, um, some of it is about you know, solving a problem. Um, so cancer research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So meeting needs. So babysitting, babysitting kids. About the homeless sleep out, right? Yeah, homeless sleep out. So that was um, that was raising money to rescue people. Yep. Pardon? Youth group. So what's that about? Restoring communities by meeting a need. Seizing opportunities. Play group. What's Playgroup do for us? Rebuilds families yep. and restores. Oh, see, that's now we're getting there. Yep. Fostering kids is a great way of meeting a need and building families. Mops. So that's about. That's about. I guess restoring, solving a problem. I don't. Eat. What I'm really what I want to say. There's no right or wrong box to put it in. Okay, you can put. But your, whatever it is that grips you and however you feel that it needs to be addressed is actually a gift. Okay? It's a gift. You don't need to be the future thinking community centre design building guy who doesn't give up for 15 years and just goes power through and, you know, <laughs> just get out of the way otherwise Mark's going to run you down. <laughs> you don't have to be like that. Okay? You can actually be the one who's actually meeting a need and having a coffee with someone, you know, and talking about the, the well, you know, as the, the guy with uh, the person on the postman. postman. Thank you, posty. Yeah. Okay. Do you get the point? Okay. We could go on and on. Um, what I encourage you to do, we've got some sticky notes over there. Um, we meant to have handed them out. We meant to have handed out pens, and but you could stick or just write on it afterwards. Okay. Seeing as we've only really uh, had a quick brief of that, I do want to just make a comment about uh, pursuing peace. So the word for pursuing peace, uh, the Greek word there, and it it has the same sense in the uh, Hebrew as well, is to prosecute peace. So it has that sense of a lawyer who prosecutes the law. He makes sure, he or she makes sure that the law is fully... uh, dealt out or engaged so it's all explained and it's applied correctly it's chased after chased down wrestled to the ground that's the sort of piece it's not persecute it but it's pursue it to to go after it with such vigor Um, so the um that's, uh, that idea is what we wanted to bring out in a way with the invite, invest, inspire, which is the top of your little card. And that, they are the steps that we were sort of thinking that rhymed, because I, I love things to rhyme, uh, start with the same letter anyway, um, memorable and meaningful for you to go, well, how could we step towards pursuing peace? Well, we invite someone to come and join us to doing what we're doing. Uh, they might not be particularly interested in the thing that we're doing, but you know, they'll come and support it. Like, you know, I, I go to the home of sleep out. <laughs> Freeze my butt off. <laughs> it doesn't, personally, it doesn't grip me as much as it grips other people. You know, some people work in the industry, but I can be supportive of that because I've been invited into it. So I get invited into it, I hear some stuff about it, and I'm actually inspired about not that particular area, but the way that they're doing about solving a problem or seizing opportunity, I go, you know what? I could do the similar thing around plastics or around aquaponics or around whatever it is that's gripping me. Okay? So the invite, invest, inspire concept is to pursue it towards multiplication. Now, that was what we were trying to do in our little um, uh, thing this morning where if you weren't here or you did, sort of was chaotic and you missed what was going on, well, let me just describe what happened and then we're going to watch a video which describes even better, probably. Uh, I took my reminder card, because this is not a ticket, but it reminds me, to invite someone to come into what I'm doing. So I went out the exit door, I found someone, and I invited them in. And I set up a chair for them, because that was indicative of me investing into them. We're going to do some training and some teaching, equipping for them. And then I inspired them 
to go and do the same thing. So I gave them a card to remember or to remind them what they were doing. And so, like, so they went out, they found someone else, and they repeated the process. Uh, and then, like Chinese whispers, you came. <laughs> so who knows how you, what story you heard. <laughs> but that was essentially what the, the idea was meant to happen. So one person went out, two people came in, two people went out, four people came in, four people went out, Eight people came in, 16, 32, 64, all of us. Feel slow at the beginning. When we're inviting people, investing in them, inspiring them, it can feel slow. But if we do the investment well, if we do the inspiration well, and if we understand what we're called to do, which is to seek peace and pursue it, the movement begins. Okay, we're going to watch a video, which hopefully will work. This is a um, really shaky um, video on the side of a hill of a guy dancing. The, the um, voice o that's over the top is uh, a guy from TED Talks uh, doing a little bit of teaching about it. Just enjoy the video. Watch what happens. So the second, second guy's into it. He's trying to get someone else to join him. Here we go, it starts to happen. <laughs> so if you see a lone nut doing something crazy, have the guts to be the first follower. Because it's actually the first follower who turns a lone nut into a leader. Leadership is overrated. Actually, following is the key. Okay? So thank you very much uh, this morning to the first few people who are going round and round and round and for following the process. Uh, that we could get everyone into church. Um, and we want to give thanks to God for the person who led us to Jesus, who showed us the way, uh, but it doesn't stop with us. We, we must, we must be involved in this. We must seek peace and pursue it. We must encourage people to follow Jesus uh, with all of their heart and mind and soul and strength. We must encourage people to say what it is that, how we're going to be the hands and feet and voice of, of, of Jesus. So we're just going to spend just a moment 
Uh, as we finish now, um, I want you to... Uh, we, we have two questions. Uh, what is God saying to you? Or what is God reminding you of? What is, what is out of this experience, out of this teaching, um, is there anything that just comes to mind and go, huh, that reminds me about some lone nut I saw <laughs> that actually I was interested in. I need to go and check that out some more. Or is there something that, uh, that I need to, to, to ask for forgiveness about? Is there some grace or mercy that I need to show to someone? What is it that God's saying to you? Just allow the first, the first things that come up or the things that are repeated, like you, you try and think of something else like you know, lunch. Um, but you know, the same idea keeps coming back. God speaks to us in lots of different ways. So we're just going to spend a minute just doing that. And what is the action that you might want to take, the first step um, to do that? So... We're going to put. Um, I'm going to put my timer on uh, because if you're an extrovert like me, uh, two minutes uh, lasts forever.